Just when I thought I was done with you, you pull me right back in. You, you, you better live up to all the hype, I'm just saying. That's right, Larceny Barrel Proof B521. Yeah, we broke up, but let's find out if we are getting back together right now on the Mash and Drum. <laughs> What's up folks? I am Jason C from the Mash and Drum Whiskey Room and today we are tasting the latest entry into the Larceny Barrel Proof Offering from Heaven Hill. Four releases of this going back to last year. In my opinion, four mediocre bourbons with a bitter and flat finish. Now some folks really like them and I get it, but I really think the high proof just really hid the youth and also the weeded flavors begging to be tasted and begging to come out in this bourbon. I said I wasn't gonna buy another one of these unless I heard there was a really good batch. Well, what do you know? The B521, the fifth release in the series has already started gaining some notoriety. So in September of 2012, Heaven Hill introduced the standard 92 proof Larceny to the market as their budget weeded bourbon offering and in quotes, heir to the weeded bourbons that make up the historic Old Fitzgerald franchise. Now the name Larceny, the keys, and the keyhole pictured on the bottle come from the story of John Fitzgerald, who is believed to be a treasury agent who uses keys to the warehouses to pilfer bourbon from the finest barrels, which were referred to as the Fitzgerald barrels. Now, just like the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof line, there are three releases in a year. Larceny Barrel Proof is released on an allocated basis three times a year, uh, January, May, and September, just like Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Each release will have different proof points and consists of a bourbon about six to eight years old. The B521 is the second release, or may release this year, weighing in at a hefty 121 proof with a mash bill of 68% corn, 20% wheat, and 12% malted barley. Now this retails for about 50 bucks and is available nationwide with allocated distribution. All right guys, so you know my feeling on this one. Uh, Breaking Bourbon, who I do trust their reviews, they, uh, they, they gave a pretty nice write up to this one. I saw other couple quick reviews, but I didn't wanna watch them too much, but the general consensus was this was a pretty damn good, or at least the best one that they've released. Let's find out, here we go. Oh, what do we have here? Some little bit of a weeded bourbon note here. So that caramel popcorn, like that Cracker Jack note that I was getting in some of the other ones uh, that I did initially like are, is still there, but there are some nice dry fruit notes coming through. This is what I expect from a, from a weeded bourbon. A little bit of softer, uh, you know, some, some dry dark fruits coming through. A little bit of cherry, some citrus there as well. A nice like a little bit of a smoky oak char as well. But yeah, I'm not getting that just straight up candy corn, caramel corn like, you know, mixed with like dry bitterness that I was getting on the previous releases. This has a little bit of, you know, some layer to it that I was looking for missing from the other releases. Still not the greatest nose for a weeder I've, tr I've uh, you know, I've smelled, but maybe a hint of like a butterscotch. This is. This is probably the closest to the actual like old Fitzgerald, you know, bottled and bond bourbons that I've tried, like especially on the nose. Usually on a younger version of it, you don't get, sometimes you don't get those butterscotchy notes, but here I am getting that, which is very, very nice. But mostly, mostly what I'm thankful for is the dark fruits that I'm getting here. Yeah, like a black cherry notes coming through. This is nice. This is definitely probably the nicest nose I can remember. All right, to the palate, here we go guys. Yes, this, this is what I'm talking about. 
finally, <laughs> I'm not saying it's the greatest weeded bourbon in the world. Um, I, I feel still, you know, I still feel like there's more of the Heaven Hill, you know, nutty profile coming through. But with that said, you're getting some layers of flavor here. You're getting a little bit more of a floral note here. You're getting, you know, that dark, that dark dried fruit note. Maybe it's a, uh, you know, black cherry, raspberry, something like that. There's, there's definitely like a little bit of a dark fruit note punch that I'm getting. And you know, it, it's, I know a lot of people did like, you know, the, just the Cracker Jack and the chocolate and that's fine, but I could get that any day of the week with other Heaven Hill products, you know? I mean, you know, I wanted Larceny Barrel Proof to be able to go head to head with Weller Full Proof, uh, just to, you know, give it some competition. You know, people chase Weller Full Proof like crazy or just any Weller in, in general. But you know, we, I wanted this one to be able to stand up to that. Give me some more sweetness. Don't just give me the typical Heaven Hill caramel candy, you know, popcorn-y like type of flavor profile chocolate. I could get that any day of the week. I, I, I wanted this to be a little bit different and we are getting closer here. All right, another sip. Yeah, there's still the nuttiness but we're seeing a little bit more layers of flavor come through. We're seeing a little bit more fruit, toasted oak, a little bit more baking spices coming in through here, a little like cinnamon, some clove. Yeah, but you know, the, the, the floral nature of it and the little bit of a weeded bourbon characteristic with the fruits, the apple, the cherry, the raspberry, that's what's making the difference here. That's what's setting it apart from other releases. We're gonna test it out just a second against this one here, but. Go for another sip. This one even drinks like a weeder. Doesn't really have, even at 121 proof, right? Even at 121 proof, it doesn't have the harshness and the, and the youth isn't shining through. This is a little bit more rounded. It's finishing easier. Yes, this is a lot closer to what I was looking for from Larceny uh, Barrel Proof. So let's uh, test it against the A121 is the uh, the last one that I have. All right, A121 versus the B521. Let's see how they fare here. Wow, the, nose, the noses are really different. The A121 is just, again, like I said before, it's just that Cracker Jack peanut heaven hilly type of flavor profile on the nose. A little bit of chocolate there. Getting some of the weedy, like the weeded, uh, the weeded grain notes there. But man, the, the B521, this is just, has another level of sweetness to it. A little bit more oak, a little bit more texture. The dark fruits just make all the difference here. It even, you know, smells like it's older than it than it is. Like I feel like if this is six to eight years, I feel like we're looking more towards this eight year uh, profile on this, even though that might not be the case. But whatever barrels they chose for this is just coming across older. All right, let's try the A121. It's harsher, it's more bitter, it's youthful. There's an oak tannin dryness to it that I can't stand. Contrasted to this one, much more rounded, sweeter, richer in flavor, richer in oak. There's there's mixes of like citrus, some orange, you know, like orange peel, lemon peel, the the dark fruit characteristics in here. It's just way way more rounded. This this is what I've been wanting from Larceny. You know, I, I've been hard on it. I mean, it won Whiskey of the Year from Whiskey Advocate for uh, 2020, and I was like, what the hell are they drinking? And, and, I, and I realized that they, you know, they gauge a lot on value and quality, and yes, you have a very, very high value uh, bourbon here, especially it being a weeder, being, you know, cast strength. Yeah, I mean, you do have Makers, you know, 46 now, the cast strength version from Makers, which I need to put up against this at some point, because I think that could give even this a run for its money. Uh, you know, the Weller Full Proofs of the World and some other weeders that are out there. But this is a lot closer to uh, what I think Larceny Barrel Proof should be. I'm finally happy that it's gotten to that point. One more sip of each. Yeah, and it drinks like a weeder. 
You know, after a couple sips, you get used to that proof. It's just, it's an easy sipping, little bit of dark fruit, layers of caramel, some toasted oak there, some citrus notes as well. Man, you compare it to this one, the A121. Yeah, the A121 is just, even coming off that, you could still taste the bitterness and the dryness. The fact that it doesn't have the layers of flavor that this one does. All right, guys, final breakdown. This will, this will be fun. All right, guys, we're up to the final breakdown. Price for this one, 50 bucks. Uh, secondary value, I've seen these about 120-ish, I think at its highest. Uh, that's you know still way too much for, I think, for what this is, but that's the highest I've seen it at. I think, I think it is a little bit cheaper on secondary, but yeah, 120, I think, is the, the highest that I've seen it for. All right, availability. Availability, as you guys know, it's available three times a year. Uh, we have January, we have May, and we have September. We have three times a year can get this. Now, even though they have great distribution, it is allocated. Uh, it is an allocated release. It's a little bit hard to find because usually when they do hit, they get snatched up pretty fast. So, so I would say availability is okay, but they do go fast. Value, I think the value is really good on this one. I would, I would put actually this as a high value. Uh, just because this is from one of the big guys, you have one of the big distilleries, Heaven Hill. Uh, you also have it at a $50 price point. You don't really see, you know, unless you live in Ohio where there's a lot of Weller around that you can get at a, you know, for MSRP, you don't see the, the Weller lineup from Buffalo Trace priced, you know, that low. Uh, also, you know, there are a great amount of, you know, other distilleries that do weeders now, but they're still, they're all around that $50 price point or even higher. So for a big distillery to come out with a $50 price point with a whiskey that's six to eight years old, I think is a high value. All right, the most I'd pay, you know, 50 bucks. If the uh, distillery is gonna give it to me for 50, especially for a bourbon I haven't been that crazy about, uh, I'm gonna leave this at 50. Now, if these get better down the line, we'll see how it goes. If it still starts getting better and better. Now, if they revert back to what it was in the last, uh, you know, the last four releases, we'll see what happens. But for this one, I'm happy to pay the 50. Is this a recommend? Well, holy shit. This is the first bottle of Larceny Barrel Proof I'm gonna recommend. It's, it's good, it's definitely more layered. This is the direction Larceny Barrel Proof should be going, so Heaven Hill, or if anyone from Heaven Hill is watching, the way this drinks, the way the flavors are a little bit more layered here, you got some dark fruits in it, it drinks like a weeder, you're not getting that harsh, bitter, youthful notes to it at all. This is, this is a really nice sipper, a great Barrel Proof weeded offering. You guys, you know, keep this up, keep it either this good or get better. Do not revert to the first four batches that you had before, because once that happens, you'll lose my trust. But right now, you have my attention for a little bit, Heaven Hill with this Larceny Barrel Proof. Keep it up. This one, I actually do recommend. So give it a try. All right, guys, I well, hope you enjoyed this review for the brand new Larceny Barrel Proof B521. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. Let me know, you guys out there who have had this uh, already, if you agree with me, does it seem like it's going down the right path to you now? Does it seem a little bit more uh, robust in flavor, a little bit more layered, great finish? Uh, some of those really, you know, those typical weeded bourbon notes that we're getting now. So leave a comment below. And like I always say, it's not about the whiskey. It's the people you share it with. So cheers. And I'll see you next time right here on the Mash and Drum. Take care, everybody.